Hey everyone, welcome to Happy Metal Customs, Tips and Tricks. Today we're going to be talking about tuning up your vehicle. And uh, this goes your cars, your trucks, uh, your lawnmower, your motorcycle, whatever. They will eventually need a tune up. I know some of the newer model cars go for a lot of miles without a tune up. But me, I don't push that limit. I'd rather do it sooner than later and not have any issues. And this is just some little tips and tricks I'm going to pass along for those of y'all that do your own maintenance. Uh, first off, when you're doing a tune-up on your vehicle, and of course this is vehicle specific, make sure that you do a good complete job. Buy good quality parts, don't buy no junk or the cheapest stuff they have because that's what you'll end up with. Nothing but problems. So, starting with your basic uh, newish vehicle, uh, fuel injected style, you have spark plugs, and make sure you look them up properly and get the proper plug for that particular vehicle. And now, on some of them, you have wires, spark plug wires, or you have a coil on the plug which you'll see them, little box about yay big, and they snap right down onto your spark plugs or screw down on there. But they will have a rubber boot on them as well, which you need to inspect when you got them out and you're changing your plugs. So you got them items. Then, the overlook stuff. PCV valve. The engine has to breathe. And PCV, positive crankcase ventilation valve, is very important. Most of the time, low cost. Definitely want to change it out when you do a tune-up, as well as your air filter and your fuel filter. So keep all of that there in mind, as well as uh, you have a car that's got a mass airflow on it, which a lot of them do. Clean the mass air and inspect it. It's another thing that can give you a lot of issues down the road and in my opinion should be part of a good tune-up. Now when you're doing your tune-up a little thing that I use when I'm taking my plugs out most of y'all have this basic spark plug socket and it's got that little rubber uh, o-ring down in there that helps hold the plug. I hate them things. I take them out and throw them away. Because a lot of these plugs are just hard to get to nowadays. And you get that socket on there, and you have trouble getting it back off after you reinstall the plug, or you get it off and that little rubber stuff come out and stuff down there. It's just a hassle. So what I do, I have a spark plug boot. This came off a Dodge Neon, the best I remember. This is the longest one that I know of. And I use it on pretty much every vehicle. Stick the plug in there, get it started, works fantastic. Especially on them like inline fours and inline sixes where the plugs are all straight down, seem like they're 20 miles down inside the motor. This thing will get you down in there, help you get the plug out and put the new ones in. And don't forget, when you're pulling your plugs out, make sure that that engine is cold. And I mean cold. It's been parked overnight or the majority of the day. You do not want to take a plug out of a hot motor. That's how threads get stripped. Because the majority of the heads nowadays are aluminum and it's easy to mess them up. So y'all keep that in mind. Also, when you put your plugs back in, I know they're pre-gapped out of the box, but always recheck them because you never know. And I highly suggest using an anti-seize compound on the thread of your spark plugs. This is just good practice as far as I'm concerned. And the next time you go to take your plugs out, they'll come out easier and they're less likely to get seized up in that aluminum head. And for those of y'all with older vehicles that do have the long spark plug wires, uh, your vehicle may be old enough that it has a distributor cap and rotor button on it. There again, 
get good quality products. Uh, when it comes to a cap, I like to get the brass inserted caps versus the aluminum ones. Uh, seems like it conducts electricity a whole lot better and it lasts a lot longer. It's worth a couple of extra dollars. And make sure you mark your wires, even on something like this here. This is a distributorless ignition system. It has a coil pack. But if you're not familiar with this, do one plug, one wire. One plug, one wire. That way you won't get them mixed up and have any issues. It's one of them better safe than sorry things. And on your wires, when you put your new wires on, be it a long wire, be it a cap and button style wire, or be a coil on plug, the little uh, boot that's on there, I always suggest using some of the dielectric grease. You're going to get a better electrical uh, conduit through there with the dielectric grease. And it's going to cut down on corrosion, especially on these coil packs. And if you have to take the wires on and off for any reason, they'll come on and off a whole lot easier and you don't have to go out and spend a lot of money on something like that. Uh, for us cheapy cheaps on a budget, you can use Vaseline. It's a good dielectric grease, it's dirt cheap, and a little jar will last forever doing stuff like this. As well as uh, electrical connections. Dielectric grease, use Vaseline on them, and bam, there you go. Cheap and you've done a good job. And to add, if you're having an issue with your vehicle and you think a tune-up is going to fix it because it's on a misfire code or something like that, uh, this above all. Test it, don't guess it. You know, anything, uh, most vehicles 96 and up, some of them 95 and up, have the OBD port that you can plug in a scanner and uh, run the codes on, do it. You can spend a million dollars guessing at something when you really should have tested it. And another thing, on your spark plugs, when you pull them out, read them. You can go on the internet, they have charts. They'll let you read your plugs. And it tells you what's going on with your engine and that particular cylinder that you pulled that plug out of. Well guys, there you go. There's a uh, little bit on uh, doing a good general tune-up on your vehicle. And there is some other stuff involved that we'll get into in some other videos, like uh, all your fluids and uh, your serpentine belt. But for this video, I just wanted to cover a good general tune-up, how to do it right and how to do a good job and not have any issues. Well, hopefully this video helped y'all. Uh, if it did, throw me down some comments or tell me what you think. Uh, if you have any questions or there's something you'd like to know about and you want me to do a video on it, please put it down and I'll do my best to get it done for y'all. Again, everyone, thanks for watching. If y'all are able, please hit us up on our Patreon. Show some support there. Uh, if you would, like, share, and subscribe to these videos. And again, I appreciate y'all watching. Hope you learned a little bit. And until the next one, I hope that everyone has a fantastic day.